Today I will be connecting the God of Wisdom to the Fear Mountain, to the God of the Mound. To the God An, to the Dogman or Werewolf, to the Lion-Faced Demon, the Demon who mimics God. The Shrine of Tehut. The principal seat of the Thoth cult was Kemenu, or Hermopolis, a city famous in Egyptian mythology as a place containing the high ground on which Ra rested when he rose for the first time. Dare I speculate that in this we have the mountain of our secret sermon on the mountain. Well said, Mr. Mead. The Sumerian Anne Connection The Dogman, the Birdman, and the Werewolf The dog is poison personified. The demons were put to flight. In Ur, the city of the moon. In the judgment scene of the Book of the Dead, the dog-headed ape named Han is seated on top of the beam in which the heart of the deceased is weighed. Apparently, the duty of Anne is to watch the pointer and inform his master, Tehut, when the beam is level. Reminding me of the witch hunt. From Monty Python we get, if the woman weighs the same as a duck, then she is made of wood. If the woman weighs the same as a duck, therefore the woman is a witch. The truth is that some alleged witches were weighed against Bibles, using iron scales. That an unholy witch would be outweighed by the gravitas of scripture. It would appear that the Bible replaced the feather, and both are connected to the scales of judgment, the claws of the scorpion, the origin of the Anzu bird, Zu meaning wisdom knowledge, and Tehut is the god of. Anzu, the terror bird, from whom we derive the ostrich feather. So the Bible replaced Anzu, the gatekeeper, to the duat, the stinger of Scorpio. Grush has argued that the ape form of An is a form of Thoth as a god of equilibrium, and that elsewhere it symbolizes the equinoxes, but this does not explain the ape. Tehut entered Egypt with the supreme white one, the white Anubis, who is the embodiment of the invading forces the White Wolf is Sin, Lord Zu, the god of Ur, meaning dog or carnivorous beast. In Ur, Zu is wisdom or knowledge. Tehut is the god of judgment, and therefore Sin. We are told, but do we listen?
Tehut is indeed the judge of the two combatant gods, Horus and Set. He stands at the meeting of the two ways, at the junction of order and chaos, the cat's eyes, Sha'ur and Shargaz. Sha'ur is the mace, holding the will of Enlil. But this by no means explains the puzzling Senosiphalos, the dog man. No different from Shezmu protecting Ra in the underworld, or Anzu protecting Aya, Ea, Enki, the lusty antelope. Shezmu is the precursor to Tehut, a dark, magical, Hannibalistic god who divides the gods into parts and by doing so absorbs their powers and roles. The god is divided by adding another. Shezmu transformed from a beast to a bird to a man into Enoch who ascended to heaven. There will be wine, said Enoch, and Shezmu is the god of wine. And Enoch becomes the bird man, because he has ascended from being a demon. And Enoch is accused of writing himself into the narrative. But who is Enoch? Hermes, Tehut, the Dogman, from Ur, the land of the wolf, and the city of the moon, the Memek. The Memek. It was for one reason, presumably connected with a certain state of consciousness, a reflection of the true mind, as were the lion and the eagle or the hawk. It mimicked that mind better than the rest of the animals. As mentioned, Shezmu is the precursor to Tehut. It mimicked that mind better than the rest of the animals. The Veil of Isis, the Veil of the Duat, the Mimic. Poor Apollo, basing himself on Hellenistic sources, tells us that the Egyptians symbolized the equinoxes by a sitting Cenocephalos. One of the reasons he gives for this is delightfully physiologic. He tells us that the equinoxes once every two hours, or twelve times a day. The Cenocephalus micturates, meaning urinate. Delightfully physiologic, a fancy way for saying the dog pisses twelve times a day. From this, as from many of such tales, we learn what the sacred animal did in heaven, rather than what the physical ape performed on earth, more than likely referring to the ape hurling shit at a whiteboard. In Egypt, Heka is magic. The epithet of Anzu, Mamu, is equal to Heka, magic. Anzu meaning Heaven Wisdom, or Eagle Wisdom. The Veil of Isis. Isis was believed to be powerful in the ways of magic, having the ability to create and destroy life with mere words. I am is a verb of some. Some in Sumerian Akkadian is sun. Therefore I am can mean sun, otherwise meaning Utu, Shamash, son of Sen, the moon god.
God of Wisdom. I am Isis. I am all that is, that has been, and that will be, and no mortal has ever yet withdrawn my veil. To be fair, darling, I haven't worked on you yet, but with the goddess Ma'at, I can easily lift the veil. In the hymns to Ra, in the ritual, or Book of the Dead, we find that Tehut and Ma'at stand one on either side of the great god in his boat, and that their existence was believed to be coeval with his own. Ma'at is seen to be the feminine counterpart, the Syzygy, or Shakti, of Tehut, who is in front, the voice of, therefore the veil. And we have confirmation. Her name is associated with the idea of truth and righteousness. The Sumerian and Babylonian counterpart would be Ishtar and SDQ, the morning star, the mace, the god Sidek, SDQ, the root for the word righteousness and the name of the god of pre-Jerusalem. Mythology tells us repeatedly that the goddess is merged with a male figure, her doublet, her twin, but not her equal. It is the mother who is the unalterable one, and for this we have a plethora of evidence. Ma'at is his own female self. The Babylonian Enoma Elish stated that Tiamat was split asunder, yet also previously remarks that Tiamat cannot be destroyed or even reached. The Sumerian goddess Tiawath was unalterable, giving rise to the Akkadian language, where we find Tiawath's counterpart, Apsu. Apsu is an altered version of Tiawath, and it is Apsu who becomes the male Abzu. And from there we get the pantheon of gods, who all fall from Mu Mu and Zu, the divine storm bird. They split her asunder and merged the concepts, and only then does Tiawath become Tiamat, Tiamat. As you can see, they aren't the only one who can transcend boundaries. <laughs> 